<laughs> we got special guest Kevin Samuels, the in the building. godfather of high value, right here in studio. I'm gonna play the music again just so you guys know what time it is. <laughs> All right, all right. Welcome, welcome, we are welcome. good now. We only wasted four minutes and 11 seconds. So, <laughs> <laughs> so as you guys see, we got uh, Kevin Samuels in the house, man. He came down to Miami to hang out with us. Mm -hmm. It is lit. I put on my leather jacket just because I didn't want to get out styled, and I'm still losing. So, uh, <laughs> look, man, I had to bring on a turtleneck because this is what I rock with. You feel me? The turtleneck. So, yeah, you know. man. I, I walked up on Kevin. I was like, hey, what's up, man? Because he's staying at the hotel right near us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I was like, this guy's taller than me. This is BS, man. <laughs> I'm 6'3". He's like 6'4". I'm like, oh, this is not this is not cool, man. So when we go out for dinner tonight, I'm definitely going to be wearing my Chelsea boots or my Chucka boots. He was styling a profile, and the ladies were checking him out. I was like, man, this is BS. Look, uh, we yeah. already have a super chat, but I'm going to let Kevin talk a little bit first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. no. Go ahead, guys. Let's just get into it. Uh, uh, so um, before we get into the question, because people are probably wondering, how did you meet Kevin? How did you guys connect? So I'll, real quick, we'll go down memory lane, guys. I met Kevin through Donovan Sharp. Obviously, as you guys know, Donovan is a good friend of mine, mm -hmm. uh, and Donovan is also a good friend of Kevin. And uh, Donovan reached out to me to do the show, The Six. As you guys know, on Sundays, we go live every eight, every week, Sunday at 8 p.m. And uh, Kevin was on a panel, and me and him talk, uh, talked you know, during our shows, whatever it may be. I was like, hey, man, you need to come down to Miami whenever you can. He was like, yeah. And uh, we did a show last week, and he just like booked this flight right there on the air. And I was like, oh, it's lit. And then, uh, <laughs> and then he's here now, and... You know what I mean? That's that's a sign of success when you can just like leave wherever, whenever you want. You know what I mean? And just travel and do things. So you know, this is we're just happy to have him here in the studio. Uh, I guess, fresh, you could ask the first question, man. We could take it off. I, I gotta say as well, yeah, man. Like like Kevin Samuels is a guy that like I look up, I look up to all the time. And for for me to just say this, like he is the guy that knows about the digital footprint and the image and person footprint foot, footprint because yeah. like most people they have an idea how they want to look. He knows how you should look, and that's yep. very important, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So, but for anyone that doesn't know who Kevin Samuels is, Kevin, who is Kevin Samuels? Uh, well, man, a jack of many trades. Um, <laughs> my background is varied, uh, mm -hmm. but it, at at best, I'm just a guy like you. Um, I'm a geek. I'm a hobbyist. I'm a I'm quirky. I, I like strange things, and I like cool stuff. Um. My profession now is a professional image consultant, though personal and corporate. Mm -hmm. But what really kind of catapulted me into where I'm at now is my life coaching mm -hmm. and my advice because uh, most of my clients, after we did the outside part, we still needed to work on the behavior, communication, and the all-important digital footprint. So YouTube is a great place to educate and entertain all at the same time. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, uh, uh, so... For people that don't know what an image consultant is, can you tell them what an image consultant yep. does? Because a lot of guys are like, what's an image? What? I package people. I package people. Simple as that. And an image consultant, simply put, you've heard you, don't, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Yes. yes. Inside of the first seven seconds of meeting someone or seeing someone for the first time, the human, brain, the human being makes about 11 different assumptions about you that stick. And it's nearly impossible to change them. Mm. Uh, socioeconomic status, educational level, religious affiliation, sexual orientation, perceived attractiveness. All these things go into a complex mix of people deciding whether or not to thumbs up or thumbs down. Right. It comes back from our old primitive brain when we used to have to uh, make snap decisions when all the men would go out to hunt for the buffalo, you know. Human beings used to have to see someone coming across the prairie and make a decision based upon how they walked, how right. their gait. Uh, and we uh, still use that. So my job is using image, which is communication. Image is a language. And most people speak the wrong language, speak multiple languages in one sentence. But at the end of the day, it's miscommunicating. So I package people to help them get the best kind of outcome they want. See, I can agree with that because for me, the online presence itself speaks for itself as well. Mm -hmm. So that's your like your resume, your online perception. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, people judge you based off of that. Mm, yes. And in today's marketplace, in terms of like the bear bug, what's going on, people find you online first for the most part. Mm -hmm. They may see a video, they may see a story of you, and they may see a picture of you on your on your social media itself. And they say, you know what? Either I want to work with him or I don't I don't want to want to work with him. Mm -hmm. And you got to be careful what, what image you put out there. So you're right. Yeah. And, and see. 
many, especially men, we tend to discount the social aspect mm -hmm. because we lived in a world to where we got and out there and built stuff with our hands and this and that. So we didn't have to worry about the niceties or nuances of uh, uh, interpersonal communication. Right. But now the world is connected, smaller. People can sit there and watch something you say on a loop over and over again. And that either goes to reinforce or, or, or repair what they already think about you. So the digital footprint um, has always been major, but ever since the uh, beer bug, yeah, it's it's everything now. Mm -hmm. you, you get the you get it right online, uh, you can write your own ticket. You get it wrong online, it's a wrap. Yeah, right. and that that's so important, man. That like you never get, uh, and that's one thing I remember about you when you say that, like you never get another chance to make a first impression, mm -hmm. and it's very important because, quite frankly, people don't have time to sit there and talk to you and get to know you and see. Mm -hmm what you're about. So they're going to make immediate assumptions about you to save time and also to protect themselves. You yep. know? So if you convey yourself as like maybe a weirdo or a thug or whatever it may be, people are automatically going to assume you're a dangerous individual and not want to deal with you. So right. it's very important. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about, cause you know, um, when we do our show, uh, the six, you talk a lot about your background with corporate sales, mm -hmm. um, and how you used to work for corporate America. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what led you to become an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I went to college for chemical engineering and I did internships for three semesters. Mm -hmm. And I, after leaving college, I went to work as a corrosion engineer for a year and a half and I absolutely hated it. Mm. So I did something that you're not supposed to do. I quit. I quit my job and started waiting tables at Papa Doe. Um, and what's funny is becoming, I, as a teenager, I always worked in food service, fast food, all that kind of stuff. Because look, you get to eat for free. I was broke. Go to work, make some money, eat for free, good things. Um, waiting tables actually was the best move possible because everyone goes out to eat now and then. If you work at a high end, a higher end restaurant, it puts you in proximity of a lot of people, oh. and you get to learn some basic sales skills, like at McDonald's. Would you like fries with that? How about you supersize? That's an upsell. Mm -hmm. Well, you make more money that way. So. Uh, my personality is I'm a perfectionist by nature. So anytime I do something, I try to be really good at it. I went into my job as a server with the idea I'm going to give the highest level of service because I want you on tip. I want a lot of money. I don't want, you know, 15%. I want, I want that money. And mm -hmm. the funny thing is if you've ever gone to a business luncheon, uh, business people go to restaurants all the time. And I actually got recruited away for sales at Papado, mm, to a wow. company called MCI. MCI, for those of you who don't know, it was acquired by a company called WorldCom. Mm -hmm. But before WorldCom existed, there was AT and T mm -hmm. and MCI, Coca Cola and Pepsi. That's how big it was. Now it's gone. I started working for MCI, telemarketing, selling long distance from New York to California, biz to businesses. Mm -hmm. the absolute hardest possible sale you can imagine long distance telecommunication to business mm. coast to coast. Um, and what it did is it threw me into the deep end of the pool. And I learned that there are some people who are just going to come in there and do the basic stuff, read the script. There's some people who are going to learn and approach it like a professional. That's what I did. I went and took the training that they gave me, uh, I saw that if I could increase my closing percentage or whatever, I could give yourself a raise, which sales is the one career that you can actually determine how much money you make. So I went and invested $5,000 into my own self to get additional sales training. And I netted $15,000 more that year. Sales became for me a way to take my technical uh, right brain stuff and and and, and uh, my left technical left brain stuff and mm. and and max it with creativity. Mm. Um, the natural progression for telemarketing, most people just stay working in a call center. I went outside sales because six foot four, great presentation, and that's when you really get in the big game. Yeah, car allowance, expense account, and you but you still got to do the same thing: knock on fifty doors or make fifty phone calls, cold calling. And I had to learn the business from scratch. It was the best because mm -hmm. I chose one of the most difficult territories and one of the most difficult verticals 
because of the potential. Mm -hmm. I sold to lawyers most of my career. Mm -hmm. So in my in my sales career, I was in telecommunications until that industry fell apart in the early 2000s. Uh, and then I spent a few years in office products and then another about 10 years in advertising and marketing. Okay. Sales was the best. It, sales was great because, like I said, you could give yourself a raise mm. and flexibility. Your first hire, last fired when you're a profit center. So uh, I, that's why it's one of the things I always recommend to guys, especially if you have a good technical mind, mm -hmm. mixing it with sales ability makes you an unstoppable threat in most places. Bam. Yeah. God, man, I, I didn't want to interrupt that. We got a couple of super chats. We'll read them real quick and then we'll get right back into it, guys. Obviously, as you can see, this is going to be a good interview. Uh, <laughs> we got Secret Truth with a $5 sticker. Thank you so much for the support. We got Bobby McKnight Harrison. Thank you so much for the super chat, man. $20 super chat. Get the likes up. This is Epic, the Godfather and Fresh and Fit collab. Thank you so much, man. Guys, like the video, man. Boots in the algorithm. We got also before uh, Oliver Eugene, he says, shout out to the Godfather, CIA, man in the building. Yeah, <laughs> man. No, this is lit. Um, So what made you like leave sales? Because obviously you were doing well. You're making a good living for yourself. What made you say, I'm leaving corporate America, high-end sales. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my own thing. Well... I went from working in Dallas to, to the big show in New York. Yep. And I moved up the ranks, shorten the story, uh, broke a lot of sales records, uh, got a lot of awards. Uh, the, when the industry I was working in initially fell apart. The mm. dot-com boom and bust happened. The companies mm. all fell apart. So I went and worked for excuse me, office products for a moment. Uh, to kind of just stabilize things. And then, I, like I said, when I got into advertising, what really did it for me, though, is when I started working for at and I went back and looked at all of my sales results over my career, and I had sold in excess of $45 million in products and services. Wow. But the problem is, if that was my business, I would have had at least 10% of that. Mm. Not as a corporate salesperson. You get a great salary, Great commission, fly first class, business account. But once you leave, it's gone. Yeah. Nobody wants to be a salesperson until they're 60 and carrying a bag. And I did not want to go into management. Yeah. So it was the perfect time for me to say, pull the lever and press the button and get out. And we started our own boutique advertising agency. Surprisingly enough, uh, my ex took me to a Primerica um uh, Primerica, Mo Primerica. Now, I know a lot of people don't like multi-level marketing with Primerica because they sell insurance yeah. uh, and finance services. That, I went to Primerica and it opened my eyes to entrepreneurialism mm -hmm. uh, because being in sales, it was like having your own business working for another company. Mm -hmm. But I would go out and close a, a, a deal. My manager would eat, his manager would eat, the CEO would eat, the engineer would eat, customer service, uh, everybody else. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Everybody has to eat off what I get. I can go out and sell the same stuff and make the profit. Bam. And I learned this yeah. in, in uh, telecommunications. Many people would leave telecom, start their own LLC, and go make a contract with the company they used to work for, MCI, AT&T, Quest, whatever, and buy time in bulk and go sell it to their very customers that they did when they worked for the organizations. They were making 10 times more money selling the same product to their former customers at a better price because they were in business. Yeah. See, most of us were taught how to be labor in this Prussian school system. We were taught how to become, pull the lever, push the button, make the sausage. We weren't taught to be entrepreneurial minded and go out and build your own stuff and do your own thing. I actually had to repress that uh, to go to school and other kind of things. So it was always something that made sense to me um, because at the end of the day, the biggest thing with being an entrepreneur is if you're not making money, you're not in business. Yeah. And yeah. Coming from a sales background, I knew I could always make money. Mm -hmm. It's just what was I going to sell? That was pretty much it. So yeah, that's your gotcha. So you 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 realize that like working for corporate America, you're taking a big cut, and no matter how much you worked, it was never going to be enough to get you where you want to go. It, it, well, it's not like it was back when the CEO made you know a hundred times as much as the uh, lowest paid worker. Now you got CEOs making millions and wages have been flat. It doesn't take a brain surgeon or rocket scientist to understand that you can fly first class, live a cushy life, but there's no real job security. And, and, you, and just like anything, 
you get tired of running as a salesperson and closing deals. Mm -hmm. Well, yep. what what happens if you don't want to become a manager and you're tired of being a salesperson? What's the alternative? Yeah. You make too much money to go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it just makes sense to start your own business. Um, and it made perfect sense because, hey, I, I knew enough about the business to realize that being starting a boutique advertising agency, I was selling the same products to the same companies that I was selling over here, and I had more access. So um, that's why I'm such a big proponent of sales. If you're going to be in business, you have to have somebody in charge of sales. Everybody knows the stuff, the mm -hmm. core competencies, but until you can go out and make drum up new business, make business, you, you're not really in business. For yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, if you're not making money, then quite frankly, it's a hobby. You know what I mean? It's, it's it. not a business. That's it. That's it. So I'll say this because you were able to transition uh, and use social media mm -hmm. to, you know, to propel your business. You've been on World Star. You were on World Star yesterday, matter of fact. You know, you've been on it twice now, featured. Uh, <laughs> your YouTube is going viral. Ur Urban Central as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Urban Central. So can you tell us a little bit about like the importance of a digital footprint? And uh, how that's helped you with, uh, you know, your business endeavors, obviously you're a high level image consultant, but has that like, how, how much, how much more traffic is that driven? How has it helped your uh, entrepreneurial pursuits? Well, you know, when I started my business, strangely enough, I actually, you have to know the market you're in. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in my business, it's a visual market yep. and being an image consultant, people want to be able to see that, you know, how to put things together. Yep. They want to, uh, check out your prices, check out your credential. People want to kick the tires. So, excuse me. Being an image consultant, telling people that your image is four parts, guys. A, B, C, D. Appearance, behavior, communication, digital footprint. Bam. Digital footprint is the, the most long-lasting, probably the most important of the four after the seven seconds. Because... Everyone, when they meet someone today, is going to look at their LinkedIn, their Facebook, mm. their Insta, their this, their that. And you have to have a consistent personal brand strategy across all of your media. Mm. You are a diff you're the same person, but you have a different reason for going to each social media platform. Case in point, you go to Facebook to connect with your friends and family members and things like that if you still use it. If you go to Instagram, it's more for immediacy, these things. But you go to TikTok, it's for something different. Yes. But then when you go over to Snap, it may be for something different. And then go over to YouTube, it's more for, for long-form content. Well, you can't have the same thing in all these different places. Damn. Yeah. Right. And if you do, it shows a lower level understanding of who people are when they're on these things. Mm -hmm. But if you have something customized for Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, it shows that you a as more of a savvy digital player, which raises Damn. your value in people's eyes. Yes. That is so true, man, yep. because if you take YouTube content, because I've noticed because I've done experiments, I'll take like YouTube clips and I'll put on Instagram. It doesn't do nearly as well at all. You know what I mean? But if you just use something that you actually created for Instagram, mm -hmm. that's more, I guess, how do I say? It's easier to consume mm -hmm. on that platform you're going to get more reach. And nowadays with social media, everything it is, engagement is the name of the game. Right. How long can you keep someone on the app? The more you can keep someone on the app, the further the algorithm is going to push you to be to other audiences. So that's very true what you were saying. Well, Facebook did that. I don't know how long. If you have been around as long as I have, Facebook made a critical move in 2015 that Twitter did not do. Facebook mm. slowed down organic reach. Mm. Uh, it used to be if you had 5,000 friends if you made a post it would go out to all five thousand. yep facebook automatically thought it back and said no we're only going to send it out to 10 percent. and if you want to reach the other 10 percent, you got to pay us right twitter allowed twitter didn't do that so people were getting overloaded on twitter yeah and on facebook facebook and with their purchase of instagram is quietly not quietly became the best place to market a personal brand and the attention is underpriced. If you know who Gary V is, he preaches this all the time. Attention is currency. Yes. And you have to be able to, if you can grab someone's attention, keep it, that is valuable. Which, as we kind of get into this show, uh, which is even weirder, like my show being two hours, three hours long, doing the numbers it does. Yeah. That, that, that makes no sense. And at the time, too, like, you know, you go on late and you're still getting like five, seven, eight thousand live viewers. It's crazy. <laughs> but but 
I, when I'm sitting in that chair, I'm a salesperson yep. and an entrepreneur. But what you're seeing is a salesperson who knows how to present to a group, yep. how to talk to this person, or I build rapport with this person. Remember what's going on over here. Understand why I got to get in the process because yep. if you don't sign the contract, all this shit was for nothing. Yep. yep. <laughs> Bam. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said that because I feel like most people forget about Facebook. But Facebook ads is one of the most powerful tools to get your name out there. Oh, right. yeah. People like put it under the rug. But I want to ask you, brother. So in my in my humble opinion, right? Mm -hmm. I believe that you are a good example of putting your brand out there and brand awareness. But let me ask you, when it comes to Instagram, how important is that for your brand and for networking? Well, Instagram is your new phone number. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You meet somebody out. Hey, how you doing? Uh, Blondie, how you doing? You're not going to get a phone number. What's your IG? Yes. yes. Okay. And Instagram, you have to understand why Instagram works for women because they are social and they can actually get a lot of information there. Damn, yeah. And how your page is laid out. I actually went and scrubbed my entire Instagram page, took it all down and actually went and got the right kind of app to create a good story, to take a picture, to cut it up into nine sections and post it on. The, I make So your it feed looks good too. Because... I could take you to a, a five star. I take you to a nice restaurant. I take you to a great restaurant. Yep. Well, I tell you it's a great restaurant, and I bring out. Do uh, you like seafood? Yeah. Okay. Shrimp. So okay. So I take you out to a restaurant. I tell you they have the best seafood, and the and the shrimp comes out, and it's in the mashed potatoes, uh, the salads, kind of touch the mashed potatoes. It's all just kind of put together. Yeah. It's not played it very well. Yeah. I mean, and you and you and you without looking at it, it tastes good. But you look at it, it's not visually appealing. Mm. One of the most important things about food is the plate presentation. Very yeah. true. All right, how is your Instagram plated? <laughs> Yo, <laughs> I'm a somebody that one. That yeah, was excellent. Yeah, no, that's that, bro. That, that is that is so true because when you look at it, when you go to a high end restaurant versus like a mid tier or lower tier restaurant, one of the biggest differences is presentation. Yep. You know, quite frankly, you're paying for the experience and you're paying for the presentation and the, you know, uh, the exclusivity, a little bit more care with your food, et cetera. So presentation is very important. When I started waiting tables at Papado, the uniform was a white shirt, black vest, white apron um, and a red bow tie. All right. I made sure that my white shirts were starched. My apron was starched. My uniform was pressed. My pins were all the same color and a line. There's some people who pull their look like they pull their shirts out between the cushions. <laughs> my presentation put money in my pocket. Mm. When I came over to your table, I wasn't, hey, how you guys doing? And so forth. Welcome to Papa Dumb. My name is Kevin. How may I help you? Even though I I would wait on people I know and I, I don't know you. You're a customer. Mm -hmm. I've had people like, man, why are you you're a customer? Because I don't want you to tip me like you know me. I want you to tip me for my professional service. Bam. It's always about present. Human beings are visual and we and we look at something and we perceive it to be higher value or respect it more. So if you actually have Instagram working for you like a tool, as a tool, like your image as a tool, mm -hmm. helping you get the outcome you want. Why are you on Instagram to begin with? What is the outcome you want to achieve? And is your Instagram lined up or played it to get you that outcome? Kevin, you just said in a <laughs> nutshell what I try to tell guys all the time. Look, use it correctly. Don't just post you bathroom selfies if you're in a bathroom. Don't just post you doing random stuff. Post with intention because when you post with intention, you get results. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I tell guys all, all the time, right? You need to attract rather than chase because when you can attract people to you, you get way more benefit and you can focus on what, what really matters is working on yourself as a, as a man, making your money right, all that good stuff. So, so real quick, uh, let me say something. Don't like be afraid to. I went onto my Instagram because I had done it wrong. I went and got an app, what's called Unfollow or something like that. We yeah. can just do mass deletes. Yeah. <laughs> Shot my entire Instagram and I started over. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I'm going to start with the end in mind. It's like I tell most guys, live your life backwards from your obituary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. If I had 10 million subscribers, how would my Instagram look? And you start like that. Bam. Man, Dude. I'll go into Super Chats real quick. This, this is a lot of game for you guys, man. <laughs> we haven't even started talking about the women yet, man. <laughs> All right. So Cam Gibson with the 499 Super Chat. Legendary men 
uh, Mr. Samuels in Miami. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. You guys should have seen uh, the ladies that were giving him some looks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, my uh, NY Kia with the $5 Super Chat. Kevin Samuels has been a revelation and a breath of fresh air. Valuable knowledge. Straight truth with no chaser. And the leather jacket game is fire. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I'm going to take that compliment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Crank Chris with the $5 Super Chat. Fresh fill with the Godfather. Uh, Kevin Samuels in studio. That's a powerhouse. Nice. Fire emoji. Thank you guys so much for the Super Chats. Kyle Johnson, Godfather and Deck, $5 Super Chat. Man, the people are loving you, Kevin. Yep. Um, hey guys. And I just want to say this real quick. You guys, we, we did not rehearse any of that, guys. And he, you guys just heard it from Kevin straight. The importance of Instagram, social media, a digital footprint. Mm -hmm. Our course is live and closes tonight at midnight. DMs on demand. Uh, DMs on demand system.com, guys. Get in now. It's only $4.97. We're having a special price because uh, for people, well, because we got Kevin here. We did it earlier with Donovan. So $4.97, get in now, guys, because we're going to close this thing at midnight. The Zoom calls begin tomorrow where we're going to do the, the, the secret sauce. Yep. Teach you guys how to uh, network on Instagram, how to get girls, how to uh, get exotic cars, all that stuff, man. So we'll show you. <laughs> we will teach we, you guys that. We got to talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, with that said, we will move on to the next uh, question here. Uh, actually, you know what? I got it right here. Um, so, Kevin, your YouTube has exploded, which it is right now, actually, because he was on World Star yesterday. Um, and a lot of it is, uh, you know, you're advising young women, maybe even older women, mm -hmm. as to how to lock down a high value man. Mm -hmm. You know, you're getting 5,000 plus people watching you uh, asking these questions. What would be the one of the biggest takeaway tips you could give? to women in the current dating marketplace and lock down a high value guy. Mm. Stop. Stop. Cause only 10% of you going to get it. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look, I, I look one of the biggest 20% uh, of you can qualify for it. Maybe 10% of you will land it. And that's really what my show is based on. You can, I, I don't begrudge you wanting what you want. Well, are you an eight, nine, and ten? Well, actually, an adjustable six, eight, or nine in the looks. And are you an eight, nine, or ten in the body? If not, move along. Move along. Um, <laughs> this is South Beach. You don't come to South Beach if you rock in a one piece. This is two piece town. This mm -hmm. is a bikini town. Mm -hmm. So this high value thing has worked because it just says. Women are hypergamous. They want to consolidate on the highest value man possible, but that may be different. See, that's possible. What's possible for Tina is not possible for Angie is not mm. possible for Hillary. So now I got women finally asking themselves the question, what does the kind of man that you want want from a woman? Mm. Mm. Put it back on them yep. for once. Huh? Yep. Well, and, and, and that's why I'm sitting here and I'm like, and I hear some, I hear when I first started talking about this same kind of concept that honestly, it, it's been floating around the sphere yeah. a lot. You know, uh, I've talked about this stuff for years, but moment at time it hit. Um, some of my detractors, like, you're so mean, you're so rude, you're so this, you that. But you know what? Women are saying, I like your delivery, I like your approach, your honesty, because what? they're doing is not working right look on your left finger and ask yourself are you sporting the wedding ring of a man of value <laughs> if not it's not working right mm -hmm. and i would tell women if they want a high value man understand you gotta not, you have to put a lifestyle plan together for that you have to you have to really scrutinize yourself inside and out Head to toe, you got to be brutally honest. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to have to do something most women aren't willing to do. Mm -hmm. Develop a financial strategy to enter into the market. It costs money to live in these areas to be around men like this. Mm. Yes. And you're going to have to invest, which means sacrifice. And then educate yourself. You know, if you want to be around a man who's an entrepreneur or a business owner, you have to understand the, the language, the lingua franca of all these things and then take action. Many women just thought it was just good enough to be pretty and have wow, and it's not enough. Kevin, you know what's funny? <laughs> we talked about this downstairs, right? There's many beautiful women here in Miami, especially in this building, right? Mm -hmm. And as you said earlier, it's because they know being in this environment is going to nurture what they want. However, they sacrifice a lot to be here. Mm -hmm. Some flew from Idaho, Texas, you name yeah, it, exactly. all to come here because one is a, is a thriving 
um, happy community. Yeah. I don't want to say the word. Yeah. And also because they know of affluent guys are in this building and around this area. That's right. And that's the thing. It's like um, men understand that we have to be competitive. And like I said, one of the biggest things is I don't begrudge women, women wanting what they want. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to are you willing to compete to get it? And I talk to women mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. And I use my professional sales skills, um, my probing, my questioning, my ability to reframe, restate. It's all sales. Yeah. And um, oftentimes a salesperson would blow a sale because you would assume something that was not there instead of asking a question a different way or losing your patience or getting off track. And it costs you money. So people are like, I don't know if I could have the patience. I'm like, if your money's online, I don't know why you better develop more patience. Man, um, I, guys, real quick, Donovan Sharp is in the chat. Shout yeah, out to Donovan, shout out to Sharp. Donovan Sharp in the house, man. <laughs> shout out to Donovan, on, man. man. <laughs> uh, guys, please like the video. We got 531 live viewers right now, man. Like the video, guys. Push us in the algorithm because you know they always censor this kind of content. So, Ke Kevin, I want to ask this because in this one, uh, I apologize. It's not on the list, but I just had to ask this because one thing I love about your show, which I think a lot of us in here can agree, mm. you hold both genders accountable. Mm -hmm. You hold mm -hmm. men accountable and you hold women accountable. Let's keep it real. Most guys don't have the balls to hold women accountable. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And right. tell them, hey, listen, you, under you understand that you want to deal with a top tier guy. This is what you have to do. And when, when, I, when I do watch your show, you ask very deliberate, controlled questions and the, and, the, and the women answer truthfully, and then you tell them exactly, okay, well, this is your mess up. And then they can't really, th there's not much they can say because you're you're doing it in a respectful manner, despite them sometimes being too emotional. <laughs> and my question is this, because you're like, you you keep it real with these women, unlike other people. I'm like, let's say Derek Jackson for one, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, can you tell us a little bit about, um, I mean, if you want to get into it, uh, the biggest difference between someone like yourself versus, uh, you know, someone like Derek Jackson yeah. telling these girls what they want to hear. Okay. Let me relate it back to business. Yeah. Let's go. In sales, if you're in a salesperson, there's a book called The Challenger Sale. Pick it up. Read it. The Challenger Sale states that there are five different kinds of salesperson. Relational salesperson, lone wolf, hard worker, somebody else in a challenger. And consistently... In, in bull markets or bear markets, and up markets or down markets, regardless as the industry or whatever, there's one kind of salesperson that continues to outperform all the others. Mm -hmm. And it's called the challenger. The mm. challenger is comes into, uh, into the sales environment above the prospect. Mm. Now, let's imagine you guys had a, a multi-million dollar business, and I'm trying to sell you guys my advertising. Yeah. Most people are going to come in here and, hey, man, like your jacket. Hey, buddy, put yourself for a bottle. Hey, take you out up to the strip club. I'm going to come in and I'm going to I'm going to actually sit up higher because I'm going to learn enough about you to, to consult you and say, uh, I understand last year you lost this deal to your competitor. So it's the consultative sales approach of a challenger. And a challenger salesperson does three things in any process. They teach. Mm -hmm. They tailor. And they take control. Mm. So when I'm talking to women, I'm teaching them something that they don't know. Okay. I tailor the message so that they can understand it. And I take control. And that's why most women are kind of like um, receptive to the message because no one's ever kind of framed it that way. Right. Mm -hmm. um, now, a lot of guys, what they'll do is they'll tell women what they want to hear. And that works to make women feel good as a placebo. Mm. But if you were a personal trainer and told people, hey, man, eat what you want, do what you want, <laughs> you know, it's not going to help your client get any better shape. And again, women are recognizing after this beer bug, they look to the right, look to the left. There's no man there. Mm. They're saying these outcomes are not working. So a guy like myself is saying something different than everybody else and showing the outcomes. My show accidentally has saved marriages. Mm. I, I, mean, I get emails weekly. You saved my marriage. Women have called into my show saying that I'm a better wife. I'm on my husband's team. Yeah. My I, my future. One lady left me flat footed. She's like, my future generations owe their lives to you. Wow, wow, that's powerful. That's serious. I'm like, huh? I, I, and and because at the end of the day, it's about 
outcomes. And when I held my men's event, MIT, I told guys two things. Guys, life happens out there and life is about people. Ladies have forgotten that men have a want and a desire in this thing. And that's what a lot of ladies are finally starting to understand. And it's working for them. So strangely enough, it's working. Wow, man. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing, like it's rare to get that kind of, you know, a praise from them. Cause you're, you're, I mean, let's, let's be honest. You're telling them the truth, the uncomfortable and unflattering realities. Hey, this is why you're single. You need to do this and do that. But I love how you kind of imply that you, you uh, use the Socratic method, ask them questions. Oh, well, I want to be a stay at home mom. Do you know how mm -hmm. much it's going to take to how, how much it's going to cost for you to get that? You're going to need mm -hmm. a guy that makes this much money. Who makes that kind of money? And you right. just let them answer the questions and come to the conclusion themselves, which is like, ingenious you know what i'm saying huh. and i want to ask kevin right because huh? we're all about being high value men here right yep. but a lot of the audience may not really internalize what that really uh, means perfect question okay <laughs> so if anyone doesn't know kevin what does it mean to be a high value male okay bam <laughs> all right so what i did is high value is not my concept it's it's been around for a long time what i did is i sat down uh with some academic academician scholars anthropologists, sociologists, reading. And I just said, who are the men across time and space, across cultures, across continents, who've always separated themselves from the pack? What are some of the things they shared in common? Uh, and then I just applied and tried to make it as simple as possible. Sales, keep it simple, stupid. One, it starts with income. We all have heard the three sixes, six figures, six feet, six pack. Yep. Okay. So high value in general starts, uh, I, did, I put a number of $10,000 a month because that number, $100,000 has been with us since the 80s, 85 yep. in particular. That's when it popped up. Mm -hmm. Didn't make it, guys. Don't shoot the messenger. And <laughs> uh, you need to make that money over a certain length of time. Guys, you know anybody can have a good year. Yep. yep anybody, sure. Jeremy Lin had a couple of good games. He's not going to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> uh, you know, five years is the target, but three years is when you're in striking distance. Because that each one of these characteristics or criteria lean, lends itself to other aspects of a man as well. Mm -hmm. uh, third, high value men must recognize you as their peer mm -hmm. or potential peer. Oh. Right. This is why you see older guys who are up here befriending younger guys who has that they look like they can do it. It's a club. It's a fraternity because, you know, anybody will tell you once you start getting to certain levels of success, it starts to thin out a lot. Yep. Uh, four. It has to be, um, what did I say? Uh, visibility, mm -hmm. you know, needs to be LinkedIn level. People have to be able to understand what you do. You're a cardiologist at Johns Hopkins. You're, you're a vice president of mergers and acquisitions at uh, Morgan Stanley. I'm an entrepreneur. Two of those three things, we at a glance know what it means. The third one requires more information. LinkedIn level, meaning that... Um, People, it, it needs to be visible to mm -hmm. where people can kind of understand it. Um, you have a, a a phantom, great, but if it's in the garage all the time, do you really have a phantom? Mm. <laughs> True. Does it really matter? You have a dust collector. Uh, exactly. <laughs> uh, and the last two are, this is not an order of importance, but the last two are the most important, network. You mm -hmm. must have a network of other high value men mm -hmm. and others. No one can have a network of sheer high value men. But let's say we are all five of us. We're going to sit down and do business. Let's say you had 50 million. Let's say you had 10 million, 10 million, 10 million, 10 million. And he has 50. And each one of us has a, a Rolodex or a network of 250 high value contacts. We all sit down and we're going to make a venture. He has twice the money, has no contacts. Mm. He, we, it is more likely that that person is going to come and leech off of our network. Okay. That's true. Yep. And he's going to try to buy his way in. And I'm sorry. It, we have the money, but we know that our contacts took us a lot to gain. And you're going to guard your territory yeah. because having networks of contacts is immeasurable. And this is why networks are so important. 
See, I'll say there's no real high value loaners because a lot of times guys will try to buy their way into it, but lack the social skills. Even if you put him in contact with your network, he likely just blow our connections because he doesn't have the people skills. Mm. And lastly, utility. You must be of use to others and the group. Bam. If you're of no use, I, I want to be used. Yeah. You, you say, Kevin, when are you going to come down and such and so forth? Uh, okay. What, what good is all this high value talk if you're not going to be useful to somebody? Yeah. Mm. It's just self serving bullshit. Um, now, I don't expect anybody to be a martyr. You're going to get something out of it, but I, it, high value is a mindset more than anything else. But you have to have these other markers because whether we like it or not, the market decides. Yes. Yeah. The market Very decides true. everything. The market decided that Phantom is worth more than this. It's worth more than that. Um, the market decides all, all of our relative value. And what we can do is do what we can to increase or decrease it according to the outcomes we want. And I say this to a lot of guys. Don't kill yourself if you're not high value. That's not the only way to be successful. Yeah. There are plenty of ways to live a fulfilled life that doesn't require all the things that I'm talking about. So I think that's one thing that's kind of gotten lost in this thing. I'm glad you said that because I, I feel like you covered all the basis of what it meant to be high value. And I want to add to that as well and just say like, for example, guys, you don't have to say you're high value. People will let you know that you're high value. Don't scream and say, hey, I'm a high value male. No. Your marketplace will tell you, your network will tell you, and just you being who you are will let you know that you are. It's like calling yourself alpha or select. Um, <laughs> it's like giving yourself a nickname. It doesn't count. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, my name is Kevin McCall. My boy, he's calling me delicious. Don't, who, nobody gave you the nickname <laughs> of delicious, dude. <laughs> <laughs> your, your nickname, it has to come mm -hmm. from, see, before I talked about high value, I talked about showing your work. Mm -hmm. And high value is a function of work, 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 work. And your value will ultimately show. Case in point, people who don't like me, yeah. And when they were, we're going to expose them and talk about this and that. And I just kept on moving. Yep. I'm yep. not going to argue. I'm not going to beef. I'm not going to give up. I'm just keep on moving. And even people like, you know, well, I still don't necessarily like you, but I respect the work. And I'm like, you don't even know me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But okay. Yeah. I remember you <laughs> yeah. said, a, I remember you said a quote on one of the episodes of, of the six and you said, um, I only debate my equals, all others I teach. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, like it, 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 that, you don't even see the haters. John Henry Clark said, uh, and it's not, the thing is, no, I don't because look, you can't, ex you can't hate on me if you don't know me. Yeah. Right. I actually had this conversation with a guy who called into my show about a week or so ago mm -hmm. and he, and he had been kind of, you know, acting kind of in a poor way. And I said, look, guy, well, you said something on the show to me that was untrue. I'm like, then you go on about your life. You know, why invest all that energy into something? We have to, one of the things that I learned through therapy and sales professional training, learning to not have to be right all the time. Be all right with being correct. Sometimes you just let stuff go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've been on panels before yep. where things will get pretty heated. You yeah. know what I'll what do you see me doing? <laughs> Playing with yeah, candles yeah, and yeah, everything yeah. else. And and somebody will say something like, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. Because I, I, I know what I believe and why I believe it. I don't have to convince you. And, yeah. And we just move, but but it also you know that you are and I aren't ever gonna get in the beef, even if we disagree, mm -hmm. it's gonna be respectful. Yep. And that's it. For sure. I would I prefer to live my life this way because right. I believe in drawing to you mm -hmm. the kind of life you want versus trying to project what you think should happen Bam. to other people. People will naturally resist that. Bam. Got Kevin. a couple super chats here. Thank you, brother. That was, that was powerful, <laughs> man. That's true. A couple super chats. Vaughn uh, Brathwaite with the 499 super chat. Hi, guys. Do you accept PayPal credit? I'd buy right away if you enabled it on the order form. I bought Donimus course with it. Yeah, no, man. We're not using PayPal because PayPal causes headaches. Uh, just we use Stripe. Yes, it does. Yeah, it causes yes. a lot of headache, man. So get the course. So it's only 497. Trust me. Once you go to the Zoom calls and everything like that, you're going to yeah. be like, whoa, because we're giving you guys crazy value. You're going to get 10 days of Zoom calls, two hour sessions each. Each day is going to be one hour of instruction with one hour of Q&A. And we're going to teach you guys how to use Instagram from A to Z. The Zoom calls is where the secret sauce is, guys. Yeah. Not the, the modules is going to give you the foundation. 
then the Zoom calls the secret sauce because we got competitors watching. We don't want them to steal the material. Yep. Uh, next, another super chat with uh, Mr. Uh, dump your boyfriend 305 with the fifty dollars super chat. We just <laughs> we just too raw for reality. I think he was referring to uh, Kevin's uh, pragmatic approach with teaching women how to get a high value guy. Uh, we got Ricky Webster with the fourteen ninety nine super chat. I'm so glad that I found Myron and Kevin. You two have definitely changed and helped my mindset. French toast, props, dude. Thank you so much for the support. <laughs> nice. uh, and then we got another one here. The bulldog mindset. Bulldog mindset's in the house. He says best description I've ever heard so far. Let me for a high find. value meal. Uh, shout out to our man John Sumnez in the house, man. Yeah. Where is he? Yeah, I'm trying to find. Oh, there he is. Best description I've heard so far for a high value man. Shout out to John Sumnez from Bulldog Mindset, guys. Yes. Go subscribe to him. He's also going to come and do a studio interview with us this month or next. We're working that out. Yeah. Uh, but John is fam, man. That's actually a good friend of mine. Uh, Angelo Joseph with the ten dollars super chat. Thank you for what you gentlemen do, Kevin. What is the name of the company? With which you invested 15k in developing your sales skill, sales skills. I don't know if you want to answer that and give the secret sauce. But. Oh yeah, um, one of the companies was called Sandler. Sandler Training. Bam! Mm. There you go, I mean, guys. Um, you know when you work for when you work for corporate America, uh, they usually have some sort of training. Mm -hmm. Um, whether it's Dale Carnegie, Zig Ziglar, Pat Cardone, DEI, uh, that that wasn't a, that that's more for real estate. Oh. Um. But, you know, I don't, I'm very particular when I hear someone say they're a salesperson, I'll ask them, what's your underlying sales philosophy? Uh, because you have to go to school for this stuff. But Sandler, S-A-N-D-L-E-R, is a standalone training uh, that, that's available pretty much uh, across the country. Uh, and it works for a multitude of industries. So. Bam. For nice. all the people out there that say, oh, Kevin's a fraud. I don't know nothing about sales. He just broke it down for you guys right okay. there. Yep. Uh, Mr. Dump Your Boyfriend 305. Uh, he put his Instagram at Mr. Dump Your Boyfriend 305. Okay. I guess you're a local in Miami. Shout out to you. Uh, cut a lot of friends off. They're wasting my time. Jason Bernardino with the $5 Super Chat. Thank you for that. And a new one just came in. TJ uh, Lamore. Yeah. My two favorite channels collide. Shout out to y'all for consistently making dope content. Thank you so much, man. We're happy to have Kevin here. Guys, we got 667. <laughs> Live viewers yep. watching this right now, yep. like the video, guys. Push us in the algorithm because we're out here spitting facts and we are not Derek Jackson. So with that <laughs> said, guys, <laughs> so guys like the video, push in the algorithm. Many, how many people you guys had before? Uh, is uh, this a record, guys? It is because we, we've had like 500, I think, the most. Yeah, 500. I think with Donovan, we hit 600 something. We had Donovan on. So Kev, yeah. Kev, Kev, I don't know. It's They're neck and neck, it, man. It's all fam. <laughs> <laughs> it's see, a, I, I want to. Uh, go ahead. You mentioned something where people say Kevin doesn't know. Look, if I didn't know what I was talking about, how can I get on Monday through Friday and talk for hours? Mm -hmm. um, what it really shows is you're not really evaluating the information. You're evaluating what you perceive the personality to be. Mm -hmm. right? Uh, and if I don't know, then you should be happy to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. See, oftentimes we... When we start talking about pushing the kind of best version of yourself and increasing your value, increasing, improving, it holds a mirror up. We don't intentionally do it, uh, but it holds a mirror up. Yep. It's like if you've ever uh, taken your shirt off around someone who's out of shape and you're in shape and they'll suck yeah. their gut in, you're not doing it on purpose and you just kind of let it go. That's why I don't respond back and forth because. Most people want to drag you down to their level and then try to kick your ass with experience. You got it. You won. You're yeah. right. I don't. Good. Yeah, man. Because when, you, when you're showing excellence, like you're shining a spotlight on their deficiencies and human beings don't like to be held accountable a lot of the time for being inferior to some degree. So they're going to typically respond with, oh, you're with hate or uh, some kind of toxic stuff. Go ahead, Fresh. You got some? Yeah, I like how Kevin doesn't like waste energy. On things that don't benefit him or make him want to like Facts. succeed more. Yep. If it's going to take his energy, nah, I'm good. You could no, you can have I mean, fun talking to yourself. Because uh, it ultimately it's it's not really a they're really not they don't know me number one number two mm. it's not really valid. If mm. you sat down with me, you know that I know what I'm talking about to the degree I'm talking about. It. I'm not I'm not, I'm not you know Buddha, an oracle. I just talk about what I know and give my opinion, and that's pretty much it. Bam. Um, yeah. So I got I got a question here because I know the people. Oh, we got more super chat. Okay, uncut dating truth with a two dollar st super sticker. Thank you so much for that, uh, Abraham Ted Tedesi. I'm a PhD. Kevin is the most entertaining person on YouTube by far. <laughs> Everything he talks about, 
I see it where girls I date. It's crazy. Yeah. Kevin, be, like he does it to another level because he tells them like the truth. You know what I'm saying? But like they don't get <laughs> offended because they can't because he asks them the questions. Yeah. And they kind of, you know what I'm saying? Put themselves in the spot. And another then, one. I'm going broke. Kevin knows his cologne. Mr. Dumb. Your boy, boyfriend 305. Yeah. Yo, somebody DM me and sent me a PayPal. But- <laughs> They were like, are we going to take Kevin to Moxie's for the steak bites? Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we have a spot right okay. down the street called Moxie's. Yeah. And literally, like, we take all our esteemed guests there. Okay. But there's a dish called Steak Bites. Steak and bite. they are amazing. Okay. Yeah. It's, we're going to definitely uh, get some good food steak right bite. after this. Uh, <laughs> so this is going to be the last one here. Oh, my God. Another super chat. Jeremy Clay with $20. The Godfather <laughs> in the building. Gentlemen, pay attention and take notes. A lot of great information you'll take from tonight's show. Yeah, man. And we haven't even talked about chicks yet. This is going to be the last one. Yeah. Uh, so. So Kevin, obviously, uh, just from the little bit that I've been hanging out with you in person, uh, you 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 got this air uh, around the ladies and everything like that. Mm. Like they, you know, it's like a magnetic energy. Can you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, your uh, your dating situation, dealing with women, all this type of things, your your views on a dating market, how you get around? Obviously, uh, pause. You're a good looking guy, tall. He's taller than me, which gets me angry. Uh, <laughs> I walk. I'm six three. I walk up, and this guy saw me wearing a leather jacket. I'm wearing sweatpants. So I'm like, nah, bro. This is. This is my city. Go back to Atlanta. So can you tell us a little bit about um, you know, you and because you 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 date very attractive women, but you do it for other reasons, which I think is 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 uh, okay. genius how you do it. But can you break it down a little bit for the well, guys? I think are uh, you talking about when we talked about on the show the escorting thing? Or yeah, yeah. If you want to get into that, I mean, yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah. Can. Like, cause uh, well, I believe in rotation dating. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and the women I deal with, they know about each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and. It's a business transaction for me. Uh, beautiful women uh, increase your value, your per- perceived value amongst your colleagues. Yes. Family. Yeah. You know, Big if, uh, if not, we'd all, if, if, come on, man, let's be real. We would all be driving Pintos if they still made them. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a reason you drive a Lambo or Range whatever. Uh, exactly. Um, so I believe in quality mm-hmm. and I understand. For a woman to spend time with me, mm. I'm already going to go out and do what I do. I love the company of beautiful women. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I don't, you know, this is cool and all, but I, I like women. I like a woman sitting over there, her whole vibe, her whole energy. Mm-hmm. And I have never been opposed to, that. you know, you're tricking and you're this and that. Look, man, the money's going to get spent anyway. Yeah. <laughs> the money's going to get spent anyway. What's the outcome? What is the outcome I'm choosing to get? Mm. And, you know, we may not have time to go in d- into it deep today, but I would say one of the best things I ever did was learn about the transactional nature of relationships. And when you are honest with women and tell them what you want, you'd be amazed at how honest women tend to be with you yep. because they don't want to waste precious time. Yep. So um, here's another thing. I can do these things now more readily because one, I'm where I want I'm I'm getting to where I want to be in my career progression purpose. Between 18 and 30, I'll be spending, you know, less than 10% of my time trying to pursue anything relationally with women. That's why I like a rotation. Because uh, when a woman decides to flake, ghost, whatever, get hot and cold, I don't, I don't play all these games. Just, <laughs> Next, pull the lever, push the button, sub in, <laughs> and, and keep it moving. Yeah. And even right now, you know, um, when I, I'm a, I'm a flirt, I'm a charismatic guy, but I also know what works for me. Yeah. I know professional women, women like the sorority girls and you know, the snooty bougie chicks. That's my shit. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm their shit. So we, we kind of work well together. You gotta, it, knowing what works for you, what fits for you, why, and, and being all right with the fact that, you know, look, I do my business with men and I have my fun with women. Damn. Kevin, you hit the record, brother. <laughs> 720 watching right now. Woo! Bam. There yeah, you go. Man. Yeah. They're asking in the chat, how tall is Kevin? Uh, uh, he's taller than me by an inch only. Okay, guys. So you know what I'm saying. Uh, I tell so, you, that's the one thing that shocks most people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was tight when I walked up. I was like, nah. I was about to turn back right there. And then. guys, I gave up because me being not a six one, <laughs> I'm a midget to these guys. <laughs> yeah. And then we got our lawyer here, Andrew, yeah, our lawyer Andrew Esquire in the house. I right gave now. up, bro. I gave he's up. Six right? seven. So, Kevin, I'll say this because you you, uh, you mentioned something before, which I think is very important. You mentioned how you would bring a girl with you to social like uh business functions etc um because a lot of guys you know they'll get an escort whatever it is just to get laid Mm -hmm. you're not doing it for that 
you're doing it to convey um, authority and status. Can you tell us a little bit about how that actually yeah. helped you and project? Because I remember you told a story about this on one of the seven, uh, six episodes that we had to put on Patreon. But can you talk about that? Yeah. Uh, so I tell the story about going to a holiday party and everybody was in town for the holiday party. Mm -hmm. And at a certain age, uh, over 25 years old, going to a party without a plus one, especially for a man that's trying to move up, it's not, it's a no, no, it's a bad look. It's a bad look. Mm -hmm. um, you're either looking as though you can't get a woman. You may be alternative lifestyle. Mm. But I like that term. <laughs> or, or, or it's just not a good look. Mm -hmm. And as a top performer um, looking to, to move on up, I knew that escorts were great to bring to a place. So what I did, this was, I looked around the city I lived in, which is Dallas, and I asked people that I know, and there were, and there were resources, all kind of message boards, hold on. And I went and found some of the top ones in the city. And if you go on to Eros, Miami, or uh, that's a popular escort site, mm -hmm. Eros, E-R-O-S, E R O S anywhere they will have VIPs verified and all this other kind of stuff. Get familiar with this stuff, guys. But the women who are VIPs or verified, they screen you. Okay. Yeah. They want your Facebook, your LinkedIn, or this or that. Then they want to know who, what providers you work with, mm. who you know. Okay. Mm. Many guys would say, "What? I'm not doing all that. I don't want to put my name out there. I don't want to get caught up in nothing." But I'm like, no, 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 no. I'll be transparent because if I can get into your stuff, you give me pre-selection with other people. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> looking so, at it the other way. So when I walked in with Debbie of Dallas to the party, and there were hundreds of people, and we we're mixing and mingling, and she was beautiful, but she was also cultured. She spoke three languages, very astute. She worked the room it was like i was walking around with a light around me yeah all the women were looking at her all the guys were looking at her and i had to go to the bathroom i went up to the uh, executive washroom which is normally locked to you know uh non-executives you have to have a key to get in mm -hmm. but it was open for the party and coming away from the urinal was the vp of marketing how did i know that because he is on you know company literature and things like that I'm just a guy in sales uh, and I know him. He doesn't know me, but as he's passing me, it's like Debbie, huh? She's a great girl. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Uh -huh. And I was like, okay. Three weeks later, I get a call saying, Mr. So-and-so would like you to come up to his office when he's in town. I, he was in town from corporate. We sat down and talked. We talked about nothing. Small talk. What do you want to? And then he asked me a few questions. What do you see yourself with the company? What do you want to go in the next few years? Mm. I let him know what I was thinking. Next thing you know, I started getting more cherry assignments. I started getting uh, more favorable treatment. I started getting higher and higher end clients handed to me. And what I found is that this guy was high value. Yep. And he saw something in me. He said, if a guy is willing to pay $1,500 at his level, that's somebody I need to keep my eye on. He had been watching me. Right. Mm -hmm. That one move launched my career because then I started getting invited to lock-ins, country clubs, uh, uh, ski weekends, mm -hmm. all other kinds of things. I got fast-tracked. Mm -hmm. uh, and needless to say, I asked, he's like, anybody who can get through her screening is a guy who runs, because she, when she screens you, she screens you. Mm -hmm. And this guy was a married guy. Um, but it said something about you. Yeah. It's, it's no different than being part of an exclusive club. Yeah. You want exclusivity because exclusivity pre-selects and, and pre there's a reason there's a VIP, a purple rope over here. Yeah. And everybody looks towards the VIP, that kind of stuff. So um, always about the outcome. And the sex happened? Sure. But 
what I I got much more than my investment. Exactly, far more wow. than my and, investment. And I, uh, man, because and I really wanted. Uh, it was very important. Uh, let me say this one point. Go ahead. Let me say this one point because going out with her, she got to go out with me too. She's like, <laughs> when you get in this world, I like you. I don't want to pay me. I would do you for free. I was like, I know, but that's not what you're here for. Damn, <laughs> you're here to work. <laughs> you're here to work. I know you would do me for free. That's cool, but I expect you to work. So. 48 laws of power despise the free lunch. No, no. There's your fee. Go to work. Nice. Yeah. And we still do what we do. But when it's time to, I don't have to, he ain't shit on Instagram. Da, 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 exactly. Da, da, da. It's keep it professional. Bam. 807 <laughs> viewers. Go ahead. Yeah. No. no. Like the video, guys. <laughs> There's a lot of, this is a lot of crazy <laughs> new right records. now. This is a new record with uh, the godfather of high value right here, Kevin Samuels. Like the video, guys. DMs on demand is live, and we close at midnight. DMs on demand. System. I want to say something real quick, and then just go ahead. Yeah, guys, that is not tricking. You know what that is? That is smart selection mm -hmm. to get a, de a desired result. And guess what? When you understand what it means to be high value, you understand where you want to go. You do certain things to get to that point, and it is because you're doing a calculated move. You're not doing willy nilly. Oh, I'm gonna pay for yeah. not. It made sense. Yeah. So, so I, yeah, because I, I want to break that down real quick because there, there's a lot of contention and, you know, obviously the sphere with like tricking and everything like that. And as you guys know, obviously on this channel, we, 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 and, <laughs> we don't advocate for that. But what you guys got to understand is that Kevin had an end in mind. Yes. So he's like, I don't really care about sleeping with this girl. That, that's irrelevant. Mm -hmm. I need her to help me move and shake networking within, within, yes, within a, a, a stone veil, right? That's very difficult to get past. Because here's the thing I, I want to say real quick, because when I was listening to the story very closely, the one thing that is internationally respected amongst all men, beautiful women, is a guy that can get girls. Yes. A man that can get be around attractive women. You can go. It's it's a language that you, you don't have to necessarily got to speak, whether you're here in the United States, Romania, England, uh, South America, whatever. When you walk in with an attractive woman, it signifies a lot about about you without you having to say a word. So when Kevin's able to come in there. Mm -hmm. with, a, with a very attractive woman attention comes guy people already know what type of chick she is and then he was already vetted so boom it opened opportunities for him and like he said i still paid her because i didn't pay her for the sex i paid her for to, to work for me basically there were, there were men who were trying to get in with her for years and she wouldn't accept them as mm, clients. yeah so yeah. guys we have to really when you start playing the game at a different level you're you're playing uh, three, four, six moves ahead. I couldn't have forecasted that I was going to run into the VP. I didn't even know he saw her. But what I did know is all the people's eyes were going to be on me. Bam. When we walked through the door, I knew where my money was. Right. It's kind of like um, when I try to tell a guy, don't buy this, cheap this, buy this. Don't, don't, don't cheap out on your shoes, buy this. It's hard to explain it to somebody. But when you put your foot in that shoe, or when you put that jacket on, you spray that fragrance on, and you get that, you know. Yes. You, you know. And that's kind of a good place. All this comes back down to communication. What did I communicate when I walked through the door? That's what I was communicating, that I am here to play. Mm -hmm. I'm a player. I'm in this game. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to get drunk at the party, trying to bang the, the girl from a county. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> They're see they're 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 ivy they're they're people in the ivory tower. They're movers and takers. More careers get destroyed or made this time of year, the holiday parties. Yo, I, I want to answer that as well, right? Because yeah. Kevin's hundred percent right. And funny story happened to me. So I remember I went to this mansion party, right? And I had a date from Instagram, Instagram model, right? Yep. I was on her for like maybe three weeks. Yeah. I, I couldn't get her out. This night she was free. Mm -hmm. Luckily for me, I had a mansion party to go to, and she wanted to come. Yep. So the guy holding the mansion party was a rich guy from LA that moved to Miami. Mm. And he was trying to get her for a minute, mm -hmm. oh. for months. Yep. So I showed up with her, right? He's like, wait, yeah. What's yeah. going on here? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know you, I didn't know yeah. you come in. Oh, yeah, I came with my date. The moment she she, uh, she, she said that, <laughs> yeah. he was like, Who are you? What do you do? <laughs> Kevin, <laughs> I swear to you, right, bro? After that moment, he followed me on Instagram. Yes. He met me on, on his yacht. And I had a free yacht party. Guys don't get that if you're not on the circles. And guess what? He saw the social proof. Mm -hmm. He saw me with the hot shit that he wanted, and it blew it for me. Social proof is spoken in all languages, guys. It, mm -hmm. You know what it. I mean? It's yep. very important. And I, I need guys to understand that, like, when you're doing things like that, you're doing it. You're, you're not doing it to get laid. When you're when you're tricking to get laid, mm -hmm. that's a problem. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's when you, that you run into issues because 
you're 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 basically telling her oh you're so much worth it that like i'm just gonna pay you for sex mm -hmm. but like you're bringing her a hey, no you're gonna work and you're gonna actually make me look good this, you're not here to, to just i don't care about getting laid this is there's other motives here i was, I was so, also say something too yeah that, that i learned so because after being around her and some of more high-end escorts mm. they their clients are ambitious driven successful professionals and they are like their sexual mental counselor i learned more about success from these providers mm -hmm. because you, I, <laughs> you'd be amazed at how many of these women their fee was in their actual compensation package you make an x millions dollar you make an x money then you get two hundred fifty thousand miscellaneous <laughs> <laughs> wow miscellaneous quarter mil <laughs> straight paid through by the company because guess what as the as the key man or the executive and your mindset when you're leading an organization of hundreds of thousands a lot of money's on the line and they want to keep you in the right mindset mm -hmm. so if you got a provider it's no different than a guy who's a ceo and he takes his executive assistant no matter what company he goes to mm -hmm. um, they take their providers too yeah and it's funny because myron had a, a similar experience too where we were out eating dinner right and I just, I just met Myron. I didn't really mm -hmm. know. I mean, I, I know I, I watched his videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I know he talks to girls, but I didn't know like the what level of girls, right? Mm -hmm. So he goes out and cold approaches this chick, right? Fine ass woman, right? Walking her dog. I chased after her. Chased after her, right? <laughs> Comes back with her to the table. Says, "Hey guys, these are my sorry. Hey, hey, this is my friend. Um, I won't say her name. Yeah, Jenny. Here's my friends, Fresh and mm -hmm. uh, my my partner. And I was like, whoa." And funny enough, he pulled her, got her information. We did a video together, and he did his thing. But it just showed me the level of, that he can achieve. Was like, yo, you know what? I can work with this guy. This guy's mm -hmm. really cool. He knows his stuff. Yeah, no, man. It's 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 very important. I mean, having one women around you is is it's irrefutable social proof. Quite yeah. frankly, you know what I mean. And it's internationally spoken across all languages that if you're good with women, guys are just gonna respect you because yep. it's not easy. It's not easy. So that's that. We got another super chat here, and then we're gonna close this out, guys. Um, we got 999 Super Chat from Andre Hatchet uh, with Super Sticker. Thank you so much uh, for the support, guys. Um, okay. So, guys, with that said, Kevin, where can the people find you, man? Yes. Uh, just If you just type, uh, go to my website, buy Kevin Samuels, bykevinsamuels.com. I'll put it in chat. Um, yeah, it's pretty easy. If you just type high value these days, my name comes up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, good branding, though. I, yeah. I, I didn't make Work just made world star again like yesterday I, no, it's, so, on, it's going right now yeah man. that's what he was looking at earlier guys when he was like oh you got to be shit. that's what no, he was, no yeah. I'm, what i'm looking at is all these women in my inbox <laughs> <laughs> hey man i'm sitting there like really the power of instagram guys you know yeah. the social media and stuff dms on demand closes tonight at midnight get in guys it's only 497 10 zoom calls we teach you everything 11 modules the call start tomorrow at 9 p.m eastern standard time we got we had we had a high i think of 829 live viewers kevin you won so, <laughs> so I, I know Donovan ain't gonna be mad, happy about that, but he's gonna be back here probably this month or next. My we just boy. made two more sales here. Yeah, shout out to everyone that bought during the stream. We thank you guys. We appreciate you guys. We'll see you tomorrow on the thing. Kevin, thank you so much for coming. No problem. Man. And he's gonna actually do his live show tonight at 10 p.m. here, guys. I don't know, man. It's already 8:30. We haven't even eaten. No, no, no. Yeah. We'll, we'll be fine. Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll make it happen. Okay. Um, all right, guys. So we're gonna. Oh, okay. there's another super chat. Oh, yeah, one more super chat. Uh. Okay. Let me catch it right here. Um, oh, two of them. Man, you guys got to do it the last second. All right, been watching Kevin Samuel since his fragrance day reviews. What's the scent of the day and his most complimented fragrance during quarantine so far? Uh, scent of the day, believe it or not, is Baccarat Rouge 540 Extract the Parfum <laughs> with uh, Coromandel Extract here and Cray de Rousse, uh, Extract here. Y'all saw me do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, 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 he got the receipt. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, that's, that's a safe travel fragrance. Uh, and quarantine fragrance is, believe it or not, it's a fragrance called Hypnotizing Fire by the Harmonist. Okay. Bam. And um, then last one here. Last one here. Igabul Quenyu with the four, uh, I think, euros. Money is more than physical cash. You see access to people slash relationships are the money. As Kevin says, money making is a social transaction. Yes, very money true. Big transaction. facts. Very big true. facts, man. So, guys, we're going to take Kevin out to dinner now at Moxie's. Thank you guys so much for Stink tuning bites. in. Uh, don't forget to like the video. 
Go check out Kevin Samuels' YouTube, Kevin Samuels, his Instagram, Kevin Samuels, and his website, buykevinsamuels.com. Get DMs on the man before we close. Tonight at midnight, 10, 11 modules, 10 Zoom calls. We're going to catch you guys right here on Monday, 6 p.m. with the Fresh and Fit Podcast. Kevin, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, brother. And he will be doing his show here as well later on. Peace out, guys. Later, man.